dear students in this uh, lab class we'll be uh, talking about uh, the friction stress welding process so you know that the friction stress welding process is a type of the solid state joining process in this one we will be talking about uh, that how to develop a friction stress weld joint and how does the welding parameters affect the various joint characteristics the weld nugget geometry microstructure and mechanical properties of the friction stress weld joint okay in this particular case we have taken up the metal which is precipitation hardenable aluminum alloy 7039 which is a basically aluminum zinc magnesium alloy okay so the main objective of this uh, practical is to demonstrate the procedure of the friction stress welding is one and uh, to understand the principle of the friction stress welding investigate or study the effect of traverse and the rotational speed on the joint characteristics this is the weld geometry microstructure and mechanical properties and we have to also see that how can we perform the analysis of the joint characteristics with regard to the heat input and a deformation okay so for uh, uh, conducting this kind of practical what we need is the base metal so base metal is precipitation hardenable uh, 7039 aluminium alloy which is basically aluminium zinc magnesium alloy and it was taken of the size 150 mm length 50 mm width and 5 mm thickness okay so the two plates of this uh, dimension were taken for the welding purpose and uh, we need one frictionist welding machine we need a suitable tool so the tool used for uh, frictionist welding this is one sh this uh, diagram shows the typical friction stress welding tool having the let's say one shoulder and one tool pin so if you see this is the tapered tool pin having the a diameter at the top of the 6 mm and at the bottom it is 4 mm and the length of the pin is uh, about 0 0.2 0 0.3 or even 0 0.5 mm less than the thickness of the component uh, thickness of the plate to be joined so the not just the tool pin but the shoulder portion this flat portion of the shoulder will be rubbing with the surface of the base metal and thereby producing the frictional heat while the tool pin contributes in both friction as well as the deformational heat uh, this uh, micro structure shows the um, aluminum zinc magnesium alloy 7039 and this is uh, showing primarily the aluminum matrix this uh, white aluminum matrix and fine particles are of the these are the precipitates of magnesium zinc precipitates precipitates mg zn2 so these precipitates are held responsible for desired strength of the aluminium alloy okay and these precipitates if they get coarsened or if they get dissolved dissolved in course of the fsw process then we will see that the weakening of the the metal is taking place okay uh, so fsw tool then a suitable fixture for holding of the job is needed that is what we will be seeing the in the demonstration and uh, sometimes we apply the forced cooling or preheating and accordingly 
we have to use the suitable setup for forced cooling we may use uh, the water or liquid nitrogen or like chilled water or forced air number of options can be exploited so that the high temperature retention time as well as the peak temperature can be lowered in order to avoid the adverse effect on the joint characteristics of the high heat generation okay and this uh, is the like let's say you can say this uh, the other two plates have been welded by the friction stir welding and this is showing the weld center line so you can say the joint was developed like this and the samples were taken from the different locations for performing the different tests okay so here if we see now uh, the the cross section uh, this particular section shows the schematic of the transverse section of the weld transverse section of the weld joint is obtained by cutting the sample from any location like this so you will be getting the um, all the zones base metal heat affected zone weld zone and again uh, hz and the base metal okay now we can identify suitable location where the hardness should be taken since uh, in the fsw more heat is generated at the top due to the uh, heat generation by the shoulder and at the bottom less heat is generated uh, because of the limited dimension limited frictional heating at the bottom of the pin so if we notice the hardness distribution at the bottom at the top and at the center will be completely different and therefore it is appropriate to check the hardness distribution across the uh, at the different levels in a thickness direction like this okay bottom top and the middle so the different uh, hardness is measured at different points uh, in, from one side to another at all three levels in order to see that how the distribution of hardness is present in the friction stir weld joint so let's let's say the hard a sample for the hardness is taken from this location and likewise in order to get the tensile strength of the of the joint sample can be taken like this so these are the all transverse section samples this is for tensile and this is for the hardness and these also can be used for the microstructural studies so now we will uh, be showing the different uh, videos um, showing the uh, demonstration of the friction stir welding hello uh, dear students in this uh, lab demonstration uh, we will be talking about uh, one of the solid state joining uh, process that is called friction stir welding uh, this is comparatively a uh, new uh, joining process it was developed by the the welding institute uh, uk known as twi in 1991 so this process is based on the simple uh, principle of uh, developing the frictional heat to soften the metal and then facilitating the plastic deformation through the controlled application of the force in order to get the metallurgical continuity so in this process the metal is first uh, heated uh, through the frictional heating as well as the deformational heat and that is realized with the help of one tool so this is one tool which is the most important component helps in development of the weld joint so the tool uh, is rotated the tool is having the two components one is this pin that is probe tool probe and pin both are the same word terms he used to describe the tool pin and then there is a shoulder shoulder also uh, helps in generating the heat as well as proper forging action of the 
metal during the friction stir welding. So here the tool primarily does the frictional heating, deformational heat as well as transport of the metal from one side to another which in turn helps in development of the metallurgical joints. Since the deformation is involved, so in definitely there is a work hardening, grain refinement, dynamic recrystallization. So here, since the, the frictional heat is to be generated, so a rotating tool having the pin is first inserted uh, or you can say the plunged in the work piece at a particular point and then tool is rotated, continue to rotate at that particular location so that enough heat is generated. And once we find that enough heat, been, heat has been generated to facilitate uh, the plastic deformation to cause the thermal softening of the metal, the linear movement is given to the uh, work piece because the tool remains fixed at a particular location and the entire table on which the work piece has been fixed is moved. So since a uh, lot of forces are involved in this process, uh, so it is very important that the work piece is uh, held very firmly in a fixture. So their systematic procedure and uh, the proper holding of the job for fixing the work piece is very crucial for developing the sound well joint to avoid any kind of the movement uh, to the work piece uh, components during the welding. Okay, so there are a uh, few parameters uh, which are important and uh, those parameters related with the friction stir welding which will be affecting the soundness and the properties of the friction stir weld joint. It includes uh, like the rotational speed and the tool design uh, which includes the shoulder as well as the pin design, uh, their diameter and length because these will be affecting the frictional heat. At the same time, uh, the, the speed at which the tool is being rotated also affects the deformational heat, the heat being generated due to the deformation of the metal. So whenever the heat is generated, uh, it will be uh, obviously dissipated underlying base metal as per the thermal conductivity. And when the workpiece is moved at a certain, yeah, this is the longitudinal direction. Uh, usually in the welding, it is given automatically uh, so that you know at what rate your workpiece is moved with respect to the tools. That is what we call as a translational speed speed at which the workpiece is moved and that determines the rate at which the heat is being supplied for welding during the welding due to the friction and deformational heats. Okay, so uh, the first the tool is plunged then it is rotated at a particular point and then the workpiece is moved with respect to the uh, to, for a given tool position so that the entire weld length is covered for development of the joint. This is uh, once the joint is completed, then the tool is taken off by moving the workpiece away uh, from the tool because the position of the tool by and large remains fixed while the movement is primarily given to the workpiece. So now uh, we will be showing uh, the step by step procedure for developing a weld joint starting from the fixing the work piece um, on the table which is very crucial to retain the plates in position and thereafter uh, the plunging and the translational aspects related with the uh, friction ester welding. Uh, this is how we uh, can fix up the work piece. Uh, using the suitable fixtures. The fixtures design can change significantly as per the need. That's the length and width and uh, the kind of uh, the holding forces which are uh, needed in order to ensure the proper positioning of the plates. So basically this is uh, and uh, the job is fixed in such a way that uh, it is in line. Uh, the weld center line is uh, is aligned with the axis of the tool rotation. 
so that the translational movement gives us the weld along the line where the joint is to be made. see the tool is rotated. This is our FN Chablu machine. Here is our spindle uh, and our, all the hydraulic system is there uh, which exert the pressure. Here this is our tool. We have mounted the tool in the tool holder. Okay. Now this is our panel to control operate the machine for the motion. Okay. Next. So we can change the RPM, the tool rotational rate. It's uh, currently this knob is at B and this knob is at 2. 
जस्ट फोकस एट थ्री वन एंड टू थ्री वन एंड टू एट बी एंड टू बी टू डिक्टेड दैट आर पी एम इज नाइन थर्टी वन आर पी एम ठीक है एट दिस पॉइंट वी वी फोकस ऑन द ट्रेवर्स स्पीड दैट इज वॉट इज द वेल्डिंग स्पीड एट करेंटली इट्स एट एफ वी कैन सी दैट नॉव इज हियर एट बी टू एंड ए so b2 is dictated at 40 so we are going to weld at 931 rpm and 40 uh, mm per minute traverse speed this all uh, traverse speed in in mm per minute okay now tool is mounted uh, and the collet this is our collet which is collet is going uh, this tool is uh, attached with the spindle machine hydraulic spindle and uh, with its uh, help uh, it's fixed with the help of collet so now we are going to start the machine okay
This is our backing plate on which we have mounted the table. This is our welded joint. You can see that it's hot currently. It's uh, you can see that weld is through well. I will talk about the effect of the welding parameters on the weld nugget geometry, uh, microstructural characteristics, and mechanical properties of the FSW joints. Effect of the welding parameters say the welding speed that is the linear movement with respect to the tool position when it is increased from 75 to 120 then 190 how does the uh, the weld nugget geometry is affected that is what we can see similarly when the rotational speed of the tool for a given tool given work speed uh, how does the uh, um, uh, weld nugget geometry is affected okay so if we see this is just the macroscopic observation showing the transverse section of the weld joint developed at a different welding speed and the different tool rotational speed and if we see this at little higher magnification then what we can check here is the weld joint developed using rotational speed of 440 and welding speed of 75 mm per minute it shows the typical onion ring on the surface with a few zigzag lines like this okay and this is what it can be seen in another diagram as well uh, in a weld joint which was developed using rotational speed of 540 and the welding speed of the 775 mm per minute and uh, uh, these are by and large free and few lines can be seen um, even in the weld joint developed using the rotational speed of 635 and welding speed of the 190 mm per minute the point here is these zigzag lines are um, uh, these typical features which are uh, which looks to be you know, non uh, metallic uh, are basically some kind of discontinuities and, uh, and these develop primarily due to the limited metallic intimacy limited mixing of the metal and uh, the forging of the metal during the friction ester welding so these uh, uh, such kind of the discontinuities contribute towards the reduced strength of the joint if we see the way by which uh, our uh, the microstructural changes are taking place so we can see the weld joint developed using the 75 mm per minute this is so speed is low the grains are little coarser and uh, when the speed is increased the grains tend to be finer this is what in general is observed due to the uh, reduced heat input and uh, then uh, the c sorry d e f these three diagrams shows the weld joints developed corresponding to the increasing tool rotational speeds so the point here is the the friction stress weld joints are developed using different set of the parameters that will be affecting the friction and the deformational heat being generated and which in turn will have the different uh, metallurgical changes in the weld joint both in the weld nugget as well as the heat affected zone areas and these changes are expected to affect the joint performance so if we see the joint performance in terms of the mechanical properties so there are three um, types of the observations one is the hardness distribution across the weld nugget so uh, retreating side and advancing side of the weld joint since the more heat is generated um, in the advancing side so we will find that the 
hardness minimum hardness zone are there in the HAZ as well as in the weld nugget side. Uh, basically the typical W shape of the hardness distribution. So which is indicating basically uh, that uh, the base metal hardness is more on both the sides than in HAZ hardness is minimum and uh, sometimes this minimum hardness zone is also there in the weld nugget. Okay. So, uh, these minimum hardness zones will be dictating the location where from fracture of the weld joints will be taking place during the tensile test okay so so this is showing the uh, effect of the welding speed so when you have you weld at low speed more heat is delivered and that is why you get the minimum hardness uh, in this case uh, when the welding speed is 75 uh, for the others likewise uh, increasing the rotational speed when the rotational speed is more more heat is generated so you get the minimum hardness again in the advancing side in the heat affected zone so this is what we can see the, the hardness in the weld nugget is in this band while hardness on the HAZ side, it, the treating side is not much adversely affected, but more adverse effect of the reduction in the hardness due to the coarsening and reversion is primarily observed in the advancing side in precipitation hard naval aluminum alloys. And uh, this diagram shows the effect of these uh, the rotational speed as well as uh, the translational speed or the traverse speed on the the joint characteristics so if you see the uh, the base metal is having the the joint strength of around say 430 mpa on the other end elongation is around 16 but when a weld joint is developed then you find increased joint ductility but somewhat marginally reduced strength so this reduced strength indicates that the joint efficiency is lesser uh, than the 100% maybe. So that is what we can obtain say it is 350. So 350 joint strength divided by the base metal strength say which is 430 or so. So this will be giving us the the joint efficiency multiplied by 100 will give us the joint efficiency. Okay. Uh, this diagram further shows that increasing welding speed is giving us the reduced uh, hardness, average hardness of the weld nugget zone and uh, increasing hardness of the um, with the increase of the rotational speed. So um, we can see here uh, there is a with the increase of the speed uh, welding speed there is a reduction in hardness so there is a reduction in the tensile strength also and that is what we can see uh, from the reduced joint efficiency with the increasing welding speed and uh, the same is true here so there are multiple uh, conflicting and contracted dicting observations are also noticed and that needs a very careful analysis for the relative importance of the various factors it is not just the refinement which is taking place or the coarsening which is taking place in the HAZ and refinement in the nugget zone but also the way by which the presence of the precipitates is affected um, due to the uh, particular welding parameter whether it is a rotational speed or uh, a translational speed. So here one explanation I have is when the rotational speed is increased all the heat input is increased so increased heat input is leading to the improved uh, flowability consolidation forging action and uh, proper mixing of the metal when the joint is developed and that in turn improves the joint uh, efficiency or joint strength on the other hand when the speed is increased your heat input delivered is reduced and that in turn promotes the discontinuities in the weld joint and therefore joint strength is reduced so having the lower hardness is one thing but uh, if the uh, particular set of parameters are uh, promoting the discontinuities then that certainly be decreasing the joint uh, strength.
okay so if we uh, try to conclude this we uh, we have learned about the procedure and precautions to be used for fsw then um, how to do the study on the effect of welding parameters and then analyze the observations and make the conclusions accordingly and these conclusions can be made with respect to the effect of the fsw parameters on weld nugget geometry microstructure and mechanical properties and this is how we will plan the work for uh, uh, any kind of dissertation or any new analysis which is to be performed so they have to see uh, that uh, what are the significant parameters that are responsible for effect on the weld joint soundness and metallurgical properties of the weld joint okay so that's all uh, for this uh, practical and uh, i hope this uh, can be used for uh, uh, systematic planning and execution of the work and uh, and uh, to